If you've done any modifications to your Toyota's 4x4 suspension, you may need this item to prevent damaging other components. The best part? It doesn't cost very much. We're going to tell you what it is and exactly how we're installing it on our 4Runner. We've done a little bit of work to our 4Runner's front suspension to gain ground clearance and to make it more durable. By using improved bushings in the arms and aftermarket ball joints, we have improved the down travel somewhat. But now, it turns out that our down travel is partially limited by the outer tie rod ends. At full drop, these are maxed out and binding terribly. These are the ones that we recently took off, and after only 25,000 miles, you can see these are completely trashed. Now we could replace them with heim joint ends that have a little bit more flex, but being a somewhat daily driver up here in the salt belt, that open joint wouldn't last very long at all. Instead, we're going to make that down travel limiter these straps. These will also take a lot of stress off the shock towers at a sudden drop and will protect our expensive shocks from being that down travel limiter. Now it is true that the sway bar does help limit down travel. And we still have ours on in the front for various reasons. But that's a whole different episode. These limit straps in part are in preparation for something that we have coming up really soon. Stay tuned for that. Modifying a Toyota for adventure travel? Looking for tips on camping, off-roading, or overlanding? Maybe we can help. These are from the same company we got our lower arms from, Dirt King Fab. All straps like this stretch when pulled tight, most around an inch for every 12 inches in length. Because these are so short, they won't stretch much. And because of the stretching, they also get longer over time. That's where this adjustable upper mount comes in handy. Instead of getting new straps all the time, we'll just take up the slack here. This part has to be welded onto the frame. Here's how that happens. Here's where we'll be putting them. Lucky for us on our lower arms, Dirt King puts a convenient place to mount the bottom right here. Otherwise they could be mounted here at the lower shock mount using the longer bolt and a spacer. At the top, we need to have the small bracket welded onto the frame right there. But first I need to prep that surface and trim these legs to fit. Now I want the strap and the mechanism to be in a straight line at full drop. So to do that, we're going to have to trim these legs down a little bit here at the bottoms. All right, that is sitting just like we want it. Okay, now I'll just clean off that surface really good with some acetone, shoot it with some weldable zinc primer, then we're off to get them welded on. As soon as it cooled, we cleaned the surfaces, put on another coat of primer, and then some black. We were worried that such a short strap wouldn't fare well with the constant up and down motion. But we've been driving it for the past few days and it seems like it has no negative impact. They're very easy to take off so we may just remove them when we're using it as a daily driver. Now these limit straps have no effect at all on the ride quality or actually the suspension's performance. Their job is just to prevent damage of other components at full drop. We're also going to be adjusting the tension as we use them. Now before you go, please hit that like button if you found this video helpful. And we hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.